Good morning. This is a patient who's getting brachytherapy treatment today. The brain tumor has already been biopsied. It's a low-grade glioma in a young patient. The tumor is located in such a way that it's necessary to clamp the patient in a prone position in the head ring. In this case, a more complex positioning is necessary than for patients who can be clamped while lying on their backs. When accessing the back of the head or the back of the skull, it's important to pay attention to the position of the clamps. These may have to be adjusted on the ring in order to guarantee free access to the operation. The position of the clamps should therefore be carefully considered during clamping. The next step is to attach the localization set. This is required by the planning software in order to identify the position of the head within the ring in relation to the CT image. The pre-planning is called first. The CT, which has just been done with the head ring, is additionally loaded into the planning software. Later, the current CT will be merged with the brachytherapy plan of the pre-planning in order to be able to check whether the access and the configuration of the distribution of ESO doses of the pre-planning continue to fit this way. Here, the localization set, which we placed on the ring during the acquisition of the CT, is now recognized by means of the fiducials welded into the acrylic glass crown. These points are now identified by the program and provide the localization of the head with referencing for the program. What's important is that we now compare the CT of the time with the stereotactic information of the biopsy planning and this current CT, thus fusion, because the MRT diagnostics have been loaded to the CT of that time. In this case, CT to CT fusion allows us to transfer both the MRT dataset and the stereotactic information of the biopsy planning to the current CT. This software enables enables us to perform the biopsy planning. Here we have the possibility to import different imaging techniques into the software. That is of course the CT and different MRT sequences, but also the involvement of what we regularly carry out, especially in the case of non-contrast medium-absorbing tumors, for example with low-grade gliomas, PET scans. In order to be able to carry out the final planning, a so-called head VOI, volume of interest, must also be made. This means that the total surface of the head that is shown gets its own volume in order to be able to identify the volume of brachytherapy within this head volume. Without this head VOI, you cannot perform brachytherapy planning. We're now going through the entire irradiation parameters of the preliminary planning once again. Checks and cross-checks are planned again and again to avoid mistakes. In this case, it's a low-grade glioma. We follow a certain scheme which implies that we intend to implant a 65 gray surface dose. This means that there are 65 gray on the surface of the tumor, which are permanently, i.e. until the seeds have decayed, so to speak, left in situ in order to treat the tumor in a super or hyperfractionated manner.
So now we enter the hot phase, now the pre-planned brachytherapy plan is transferred to the current CT and we check whether the access we have chosen with our catheter is still optimal. The question is whether we need to reschedule now because vessels are in the way or whether the contour of this tumor may have changed. This means that the already pre-planned plan is now checked with the current imaging and checked to see whether we can continue to proceed as originally planned or not. Also in this step, we go through layer by layer. Here we see these colored lines, which is the ESO-dose distributions. That is, I see both in this representation what I have drawn as the tumor surface and the irradiation which the seeds emit to their environment. You have to imagine it like when a drop of water falls into a bowl. There are also different waves that propagate, just as the radiation emitted inside and outside the tumor. This orange line we see immediately around the catheter is a dose of about 200 gray, which is a really massive dose of radiation. Then the dose drops relatively steeply in the tumor to 100 grays. You should make sure that the 100 gray isodose is inside the tumor. This should not protrude beyond the tumor tissue, even if it is configured irregularly. And then comes the therapeutic isodose, which is the 65 gray isodose on the tumor surface. The therapeutic isodose should correspond as closely as possible to the marked tumor surface. Outside the tumor volume, this outer cone can be seen. Here, the outer dose drops very steeply to only 20 gray, which in principle can hardly be evaluated. But as already mentioned, the surface dose should correspond to the tumor surface. I will now check this step by step and in layers. First in the CT. The last step is to adjust the target coordinates so that they can be more easily adjusted on the Inomed Richard Mundinger Stereo Taxi Frame, Inomed Target Point Simulator. Before I wash myself, as we're dealing with radioactivity, you have to wear a radioactivity monitoring device. Here we use the so-called finger ring dosimeters. In addition, we need a protection in the form of a lead vest and a thyroid protection, which we put on for it. First of all, I adjust the target coordinates at the phantom of the stereo taxi system. In this case, it's a Richard Mundinger frame, or system of the company Inomet. This means that the phantom simulates the target point in the brain where I want to implant my implantation, my biopsy, my electrode. The system is now set correctly. I now transfer this system with this stereo taxi frame to the patient ring and can then begin my operation. In this case, I now open the old skin incision that was already present during the previous biopsy intervention. Normally, we like to make a slightly curved incision because we want to avoid the catheter coming underneath the scar. But in this case, it can't be avoided now. I don't want to make a new cut.
Now I slowly go down with the Backlund biopsy probe. I have to be careful that there are no deviations when inserting the probe, because deviations, for example at the edge of the bone, would lead to a large deviation in depth. This catheter, which we use to insert the seeds, consists of three parts. This is the outer catheter that comes into the situs with a mandarin. The slightly thinner inner catheter is inserted into this outer catheter, into which I will fill the seeds right now. This is inserted here, and the red catheter in turn serves as the sole for the inner catheter. In this way the seeds are fixed in the depth. And this is the mandarin. Now I'm going to remove the Backlund biopsy probe. The Backlund probe will be removed and now I will guide the seed catheter as planned and as set up on the phantom into the depth here. Here too we have to ascertain that there will be no deviation. As soon as the seeds are delivered to us, they are accepted by the physics department in the strength we've ordered them from our supplier and temporarily stored in an isotope laboratory. However, you can also store the seeds in the operating theater in a special safe. You don't necessarily need your own isotope laboratory, as we have it here on site. Medical physics accepts this delivery and is also responsible for the delivery. This means that the seed storage is located in the territory of the medical physics experts, who have a special radiation permit for this purpose. The handling of radioactive substances is generally subject to authorization. We need a whole series of licenses for this, which are issued to us by the relevant authorities. Without these special licenses, brachytherapy cannot be performed in the operating room. This completes the seed implantation. In the next step, we will take an X-ray to see if the location of the seed catheter matches the trajectory we have planned. And now we will leave the room again to do this orthogonal X-ray. The pre-planned trajectory is then superimposed and compared by medical physics with the actual image, and then we see whether the seeds are correctly located. The catheter is now framed with bone cement at drill hole level and secured with a clip to prevent it from slipping into the depth. Then we wait until the bone cement has cooled down. Next we cut the part of the catheter that protrudes from the hole and then we can suture. This concludes the procedure. So we took the x-ray to see that the catheter is in the correct position. Meanwhile, the catheter has been cemented and the wound has been closed. Finally, medical physics comes back and measures the emission of radioactivity. 
This is measured in microsievert per hour, and it's measured at a distance of one and two meters and documented. Whether the patient has to wear a lead mask or not depends on this. The emission, which comes from the head of this patient, is extrapolated under one microsievert per year. This radioactivity is so low that we can discharge the patient immediately after the operation. We don't have to put her in a nuclear medicine unit to wait for the radioactivity to go down. When treating brachytherapy as we do it, it's almost impossible to exceed this value. It's never happened before in the history of our operations. Patients can be sent home without further monitoring. Brachytherapy is a method that has existed for a very long time. The first brachytherapy experiments in brain tumors were already described at the beginning of the 19th century, when radioactive particles were implemented in pituitary adenomas or a malignant brain tumor. The method then evolved, and due to the need to place the radiation sources very accurately, the integration of stereotactic application of seeds was the logical consequence, which has been improved over the decades. Finally, today we have compiled a very good list of indications. We know from data evaluation, from literature, from our own data evaluation, that low-grade gliomas in children, thus pilocytic astrocytomas and astrocytromes, WHO grade 2, which are not operable, are very good candidates for brachytherapy. But another indication are well-described recurrences of malignant gliomas, but also metastases, recurrences which are not surgically accessible. These are the indications we see today. Another indication is certainly that we live in a country that can provide high-precision medicine that is also funded. But there are other countries where brachytherapy may serve as a standalone treatment option for patients who do not have access to our healthcare system.